Commander, so happy to have you with us tonight. Uh, give us the very latest on this most recent attack and the DNA. Apparently, you've matched uh, the same DNA to many of these attacks. Yeah, the last attack was uh, June 15th of this year uh, when he uh, attempted to sexually assault a young woman uh, in the kind of in the mid south of downtown area. And we've got a total of now 11 DNA matches on this particular individual. Now, the thing we have is matches between the different cases. What we don't have is the match that's going to identify this guy. He has not been in uh, input into the na nationwide database. Where the teardrop rapist is not striking is in the more glamorous sections of greater Los Angeles. I mean, for example, he's not striking in Beverly Hills or Malibu or West Hollywood or Pacific Palisades or Brentwood. He's hitting the South L.A. area. So uh, this is a ways away from the glitz and glamour that we normally associate with Southern California. And these women have often been targeted while waiting at bus stops in the early morning hours between 5.45 a.m. and 8 a.m. Uh, Wendy Murphy, former prosecutor. These are women who are hardworking. They're on their way to school. They're on their way uh, to a job. They're taking the bus. They're just trying to survive and this sicko approaches them when they're alone using a friendly manner, and then he pulls a gun or a knife, takes them to a second location where he rapes them. Yeah, I mean, the good news is, if there is good news in this, he's got a narrow enough, a specific enough M.O. that uh, he should be relatively easy to identify if, if he has this kind of uh, plan of attack, then we know how to look for him better. The other thing about his tag you know, this this teardrop, it may not be a real tattoo. It might just be something he puts on with marker, some kind of temporary tag, if you will, to leave a signature at the scene. Again, the sign of a kind of guy who's looking for attention, maybe, wants to be known as the guy who's getting away with this. Those are things that, as strange as this might sound, could make it easier to find him because he isn't as random as some uh, rapists and attackers have been. Well, that raises an interesting question. Uh, why do these sketches look so different? Check these out. Some people, oh, in some of these sketches, he's thin. In others, he has a mustache, a hoodie. Uh, sometimes the teardrop is on the left eye. Sometimes it's under the right eye. And so you got to wonder why these discrepancies. Listen to this. When someone is in, involved in a situation like this where it's, it's very violent and it, it happens very quickly, there's a gun involved, there's a knife involved, some type of a weapon, every person focuses on something different. Um, I want to go to Miguel Marquez, CNN reporter who's been all over this story. Here's the thing about a tattoo. Unless, in fact, as Wendy Murphy suggested, it's some kind of uh, magic marker that he wipes on or a henna tattoo, you got a tattoo under your eye? It's like being seven foot tall. There's only so many people who have that. It's very identifiable. Somebody's got to know somebody with a tattoo like this, and that person or persons need to call police. Well, sir, absolutely. The, the problem for a lot of these victims, though, it sounds like, is that he may have a tattoo, but he also may have a gun or a knife, and you're going to be focusing a lot more on that. And these are, from every indication I have, very, very quick assaults, uh, lasting no more than 10 to 15 minutes, if even that, uh, moves them very quickly into an area. He may be, I mean, it does sound in some of these cases as though he may have sort of cased the area, watched the person for a day or two so he knew their, their, uh, their pattern of behavior, and then moved in very quickly, uh, you know, did the assault, and then, and then moved off. It's a, it's a pretty frightening prospect. I understand that he operates in the same general area of South L.A., that whole area, South L.A., Southeast, Southwest, but it's the south of Los Angeles. And yeah. he knows the area obviously really well, Miguel, but he never hits the same exact bus stop twice. So he's, he's very savvy in how he's going through this one hunting ground. Yeah, well, this is what struck me as you look at that map and you look at that area. It's a very wide ranging area. It's a huge area of Los Angeles. It is central Los Angeles, but it goes from about Melrose all the way down into Los Angeles County. Three of these cases were in Los Angeles County as well. There might be another one now that they've uh, discovered some other cases. But it's a huge number of cases. It's a huge area that he's hitting. And the one thing that really struck out to me, stuck out to me is that the the bus stops and the bus lines and the places that he may hit, he may be taking these buses. He seems to know the buses. Oh. The other thing that really is frightening about about every each one of these cases that is it he strikes up a conversation with somebody and they feel like they know him. They, they felt 
they felt like he was just their neighbor. He felt, they felt like he was someone very normal to them and then were completely taken by surprise. And